फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई लर्निंग ऑफ फार्माकोलॉजी एंड टॉक्सिकोलॉजी क्लास दिस इज द पार्ट थ्री ऑफ योर एनालिसिक एंड एंटीपायरेटिक चैप्टर सो इन पार्ट टू वी हैड डिस्कस्ड रिगार्डिंग एस्पिरिन ड्रग सो इट्स इंडिकेशन कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन इट्स एप्लीकेबिलिटी वेर इट इज यूज वेन इट इज नॉट यूज ओके so uh, there are combinations and all the things we had discussed right so in today's lecture we are going to see another one category from same topic so today we are going to see paracetamol drug so paracetamol is also known as acetaminophen it is a medication used to treat pain and fever so its category is analgesic and antipyretic it is typically used to, uh, used for mild to moderate pain relief okay also it is used in pain various uh, forms of pain killers anti sickness medications uh, it is also an ingredient in a um, uh, wide range of cold and flu remedies also how it is how it is work we are going to see nextly mechanism of action so mechanism of action of paracetamol is para paracetamol has analgesic and antipyretic actions like aspirin same as that of your aspirin drug it has poor anti inflammatory action anti inflammatory that means ki it is having the uh, inflammatory response or anti inflammatory fever uh, sorry inflammation reducing ability in comparison to aspirin because uh, it has weak inhibitory activity on cyclooxygenase enzyme so our first drug that means your oxy uh, sorry aspirin will having the high affinity or having the very high inhibitory activity on cyclooxygenase enzyme which is responsible for uh, producing the uh, pain right so as compared to aspirin the paracetamol paracetamol is having the weak inhibitory activity right so its action is also less as that of your aspirin okay so paracetamol is thought to relieve pain by reducing the production of prostaglandins in the brain and spinal cord okay so paracetamol reduces fever by affecting an area of the brain that regulates our body temperature the hypothalamic temperature regulating system or center okay so our uh, normal body temperature is 37 plus minus 2 degree celsius how it will be regulated in our body uh, this is related with your hypothalamic temperature regulating center okay so our drug <coughs> sorry our drug that means your paracetamol directly affect that area which is present in your brain so it will uh, command okay or it will directly act on that area particular hypothalamic temperature regulating center and it will show its anti pyretic effect so this is all about your uh, mechanism of action in short i'll tell you paracetamol seems to work by blocking chemical messengers okay in the brain uh, and that the messengers are uh, uh, messenger tell us we have the pain sensation okay it directly block that chemical messengers okay so it could not be uh, it could not secret over there okay so we couldn't feel any kind of pain over there paracetamol also reduces fever by affecting chemical messengers in an area of the brain that regulates body temperature okay so now we'll see its dose so paracetamol tablet uh normally physician pro, uh, prescribe the dose is 500 mg okay and in syrup form somewhat less as compared to your tablet dosage form that means ki normal dosage is paracetamol syrup 125 mg per 5 ml so uses of paracetamol where it is used or where we are using this uh, paracetamol firstly it is used for fever okay so paracetamol is used to provide temporary relief from fever without treating the underlying cause okay we uh, do uh, we could not uh, treat that or uh, we temporary uh, cause the relief okay to patient headache paracetamol used to relieve 
acute headaches including migraine and all the things muscle pain so paracetamol is used to relieve mild to moderate pain in muscles okay so that's why it is called as anti inflammatory substance or drug menstrual cramp this is fourth indication where your paracetamol is applicable so paracetamol is used to relieve pain and cramping associated with menstrual cycle in uh, women so whenever any women is suffering from any kind of uh, sorry uh, period or menstrual cycle at that time she feel the same uh, she feel the pain right so for get rid of that pain we need to give them paracetamol treatment or pain killer post immunization pyrexia c the word itself says that post immunization that means ki after vaccination it is used okay paracetamol is used in the treatment of pain and fever that sits in after one has taken vaccination see uh, so many times we had seen ki uh, whenever we are going for booting or vaccination after vaccination we are feeling uh, increase in temperature of our body okay what does that mean ki it's post immunization pyrexia that medical term is called as post immunization pyrexia so in that condition we are going to use this paracetamol as a treatment okay this is normal one uh, okay so we are going to see its adverse drug reactions so first of all i am going to tell you ki uh, no particular Uh, kind of severe side effect is associated with paracetamol but yes if we are going to tag uh, we are going to administer more than 500 mg at a say uh, at a single time that time we can obviously um, uh, obviously feel side effect of the same okay so first adverse drug reaction is liver damage so a paracetamol overdose is dangerous and capable of causing serious damage to the liver and kidneys what will happen if paracetamol uh, we can administer paracetamol in larger dose okay that time it can cause serious side effect to our liver and kidneys so metabolic uh, this both are the metabolic my, uh, <coughs> metabolic <coughs> organs right it will cause the metabolism of any kind of drug and all the things so it will cause serious kinds of complications with both these organs liver and kidneys next is allergic skin reactions what will happen paracetamol can cause red spots on skin rashes hives or itching okay after its ad, uh, administration in overdosage okay so uh, next adverse drug reaction or adr is anemia so paracetamol can cause anemia like symptoms in some patients like uh, less oxygen carrying capacity and uh, breathing uh, problems and all the things right vertigo and all kinds of problems associated with anemia same symptoms right so next is steven johnson syndrome first of all i i'll tell you what is meant by steven uh, johnson syndrome so uh, this complication is a uh, rare serious disorder of the skin and mucous membrane okay this specifically a skin disorder okay and what happen in that uh, a medical emergency this is often a reaction to medication or an infection okay so medication that means yes of course it is uh, paracetamol drug flu like symptoms appear first okay what will happen in steven johnson syndrome a flu like symptoms appears firstly painful rashes that spreads and following uh, following by that uh, rashes it will cause blisters also okay uh, so paracetamol can cause this uh, rare but potentially fatal allergic reactions of the skin that requires immediate treatment okay so uh see next contra uh, next part is contraindication i'm extremely sorry next part is contraindication so contraindication in liver diseases so paracetamol is metabolized by the liver itself and is not recommended if you are suffering from impaired liver function okay if someone is having the patient uh, if some patient are having the um, patient history like for liver diseases 
that time we couldn't give them prescription uh, or we couldn't prescribe them paracetamol okay because itself it is having the uh, adverse drug reaction with your liver NSAIDs that means non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs NSAIDs are most popularly used as painkiller and also anti inflammatory agents they do not contain steroidal ring in their chemical structure that's why we called it as non steroidal right so non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs they should not be used for minor headache and fever see nsaid is mainly used for relieving the pain like osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis uh, ankylosing uh, spondylitis this is related with your bones lower back pain migraine gouty arthritis menstrual pain dysmenorrhea it is related with uh, menopause and all the uh, all those things dysmenorrhea again post operative pain muscle stiffness again renal stone pain dental pain and tennis elbow and athlete injury for all these uh, kind of uh, uh complications or rather i can call it as a diseases we are using this nsaids mechanism of actions of nsaids so nsaids inhibit cyclooxygenase that means cox and prostaglandin synthesis these are the chemical uh, what uh, i can say these are the chemical messengers which produces or which uh, secretes in our brain so that we can sensitize that pain okay so this enzymes are responsible for formation of prostaglandin pgf2 pgf2 alpha thromboxane form the arachidonic uh, arachidonic acid okay so i'll tell you what is meant by pgf2 it is one of the earliest discovered and most common prostaglandin okay so it is actively biosynthesized in various organs of mammals that means human beings and exhibits variety of biological activities including contra uh, contraction of pulmonary arteries and all those things uh, it is also used in medicine to induce labor and as an abortifacient okay so this is also a chemical messenger uh, next inhibition of prostaglandin e prostaglandin f2 alpha shows potent analgesic and anti inflammatory action so how they will act on your body ki it will directly inhibit the synthesis or biosynthesis of uh, cyclooxygenase and prostaglandin so that we couldn't feel any kind of pain sensation next therapeutic uses so nsaid is mainly used for relieving the pain like osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis ankylosing spondylitis lower back pain migraine gouty arthritis uh, menstrual pain dysmenorrhea post operative pain muscle stiffness uh, renal stones uh, pain again dental pain and tennis elbow and athlete injury okay in part 4 of this uh, chapter we are going to see all this medical uh, complications or all these medical terms what does that mean so we are wind up the session chalo bye